This is third week Spartan Chapel. Um, same Zoom link will be used, so you guys can hang on to those for next week. Excited to see you guys on them. Um, and then I'll get started with some announcements. So if Julie wants to, to throw those up, perfect, perfect. Let me see if I can figure this out. All right, first of all, we will have, it sounded like you guys love the, uh, the breakout rooms at the end. So for those of you who don't know, we have breakout rooms at the end of each, each uh, chapel, which are a great opportunity to, to ask some questions and, and engage with, with people in other sports, other athletes. So this Sunday night starting, we will start having uh, men's and women's Bible studies. So we, will, we would love to see you guys on. This Sunday night, um, 8 p.m., women's virtual study will be starting. And Oh, no, I'm sorry. Men's study will be at 8, and women's study will be at 7.30. So it's a great opportunity for you guys to connect um, with some athletes and dig a little deeper into the Word of God. Another thing is we have a Google Prayer forms available. So top left up here, you can see we got um, prayer requests that you guys can put in. These are anonymous. So you guys don't have to put your names in, but um, we'd love to have, have you guys put any prayer requests you have because we love praying for you guys. And we just know how, how, how powerful prayer is. Um, we also have um, an action that you guys can um, You guys can submit those. We're, I think we're going to get those out in the group, if I'm not mistaken. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but in the small groups, we'll get those sent out. Um, and if you guys need a Bible, let us know um, on that Connect form as well, because we have plenty to, to give you guys. Um, and next week's speaker will be Kirk Cousins. Okay, I don't know what happened there, but fantastic <laughs> hearing from somebody. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, Kirk Cousins is going to be coming out, so you guys won't want to miss that. Um, he's going to—he's actually um, MSU um, former quarterback. He now plays for the Minnesota Vikings. So very, very fortunate to be able to have him on next Tuesday, September 29th. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. You guys then. Um, I think that's it for the announcement. And October 6th, also, Kayla Norman is coming to speak. She's a Florida, Florida Gator. Um, and that's all for announcements. So first up, we get the opportunity to hear from Redshirt Junior Diver, Amanda Ling. We are so excited to hear from her tonight. We, uh, we have a fun fact about Amanda. She really likes to write. And she is actually an amateur novelist. Wow. With the goal of becoming published. All right. Well, you got to let us know when, when your first book comes out because uh, we'll get on that, on that right away. But, yeah, so whenever, whenever you're ready, Amanda, go ahead and take it away. All right. Thanks, Parker. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Amanda. Um, I just kind of want to tell you a story that I feel like it's been on my heart to share it for a long time. And so now I'm finally doing it. So I hope you guys, I hope it helps in some way. If anyone, a message that some of you need to hear. Um, so to start, um, when I was a freshman, I remember coming to my first AIA meeting and sitting in the seats at Scandalaris while Phil talked about how God changed his life during college. And I'm pretty sure the gist of that talk was that we might think we're just gonna coast through and do the whole college thing and only kind of pursue our faith and maybe go to things like AIA or church occasionally. But sometimes God really takes us by surprise and turns our whole world upside down and transforms our lives. And I remember thinking to myself like, no, nah, that's not gonna be me. And being really sure of that because who wants to have their entire life turned upside down? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> and when I remember this now, I think of God just sitting there on the sidelines as I thought this just kind of chuckling to himself because I really could not have been more wrong. Um, and while God has really taught me a lot during my time here, um, some of it the hard way, what I want to talk to you guys about is how I've learned to understand that our worth comes from God and that he makes us new. Um, I know that I'm worthy because my value comes from him and nothing that I do and no amount of mistakes I make and nothing anyone else does can take that away from me. 
So I came into freshman year just like anyone else, especially anyone playing a sport, really just wanting to make a good impression on my team, prove that I was cool and make people like me so I could feel like I belonged. Um, and at first everything was going according to plan. I was getting along with everyone on my team. The people in my class would hang out together all the time on the weekends and whenever we weren't doing homework. And I had even been asked by one of the guys to be his date to the men's team date night. And the women's team wasn't a part of this. I was one of the few girls that actually got to go. So this was like a big deal. And it's really common for divers to kind of be like separate from the swim team. Um, so coming in, I was really worried about feeling included. And so when I got invited to this date night and after hanging out with my classmates and stuff, I thought this was like my symbol of acceptance. I, it felt like I was a success now. And like, this was where my sense of security was coming from and like how I decided that I was an important part of the team as a freshman. But not too long after that date night, everything changed. Um, I developed a crush on one of my teammates and being stupid like people are at 18 when they get to college, I made a real fool of myself just trying to chase after him and get him to date me. And this ended up with me basically embarrassing myself in front of the team and I was pretty much humiliated by the whole situation. Um, and at the same time, I also went out one night on Halloween and had too much to drink and I was taken advantage of by someone and put in a situation that I never would have chosen to be in. Um, it was like a total loss of control. and I don't even have a clear memory of that night and I didn't want to ask to find out. So when both of these things happened, I didn't realize right away the effect that they had on me. Um, I started having panic attacks all the time, probably twice a day, most days. Um, they would come at random times, like I would just be studying at Smith or watching a movie with my friends and I'd just have to like try and calm myself down without showing anyone that I wasn't okay. And I would get them a lot in the middle of the night and I'd have to like try and distract myself so I could fall back asleep, but it's safe to say that I wasn't sleeping very much. Um, and I was also just filled with an overwhelming sense of shame and guilt and worthlessness um, so much that I could hardly even handle talking to my mom on the phone or going to church because I felt like if they knew, like my mom or God, and God of course already knew who I really was, they wouldn't want anything to do with me. Um, and at that time, I really didn't want anything to do with me. So when, I, and especially because when I was around some of the people on my team, I just felt like my shame was just being reflected back at me in their judgment so I was just living with it like day to day and I just couldn't separate it from myself and even with all this crap I was feeling I just didn't really know what to do um, and it wasn't until we came back after winter break that year and Julie told her story at a Tuesday AIA meeting that I finally realized that I wasn't alone and when Julie was speaking I realized how much I could relate to what she was saying so I came up to her after the meeting and asked if I could meet with her to talk about some things I had never spoken to Julie in my life, and I'm pretty sure the only person from AIA that even knew who I was was Hannah, but um, Julie is amazing, so she agreed to meet with me anyways. And a few days later, we met in Brody for my morning practice, and I just, I told her what had happened, and what she told me literally changed my life. Um, she told me, first off, that it wasn't right what had happened, and even if I had put myself in a situation that could be dangerous, it wasn't my fault. Um, she said that Jesus knew exactly what I was feeling, because he too had felt great shame when he was nailed to the cross and I could take my shame and leave it at the foot of the cross and Jesus would take my burdens. And I had a hard time wrapping my head around that. But Julie said that God never wants us to feel shame and that if we confess our sins and our burdens to him and place our faith in Jesus, any feeling of shame is just a lie of the enemy. And she also told me that I was beloved because I was God's. God knit me together in my mother's womb, made me in his image and numbered my days. And that was where my worth came from, not from any type of circumstance in life, not anything I'd done or what anyone had done to me. Um, and this took me a while to like let it sink in because it was really going against everything that I would believe about myself at the time. But Julie got me in the word and she showed me two verses that really changed the game for me. And she showed, and showed me that I could put my faith in Jesus. And they were... 2 Corinthians 5.17, for whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And Lamentations 3.22-24, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. These verses told me everything I needed to know. One, that I can move on with my life and put all this behind me if I put my faith in Jesus because I was now a new person. Nobody could hold my past against me because I was new in Christ and the past didn't matter. And if I'm in Christ now, my worth comes from him, not my mistakes or even lack thereof. And two, 
that I don't have to let those feelings of shame pop up again when I inevitably make mistakes in the future. The Lord's mercies are new every single morning, so all you have to do is run to him, and I can start over as many times as I mess up. I didn't have to be perfect to move forward, and I certainly didn't have to be perfect to be worthy of love and good things. Um, it wasn't easy, but I held these verses close to my heart, and I started pursuing a relationship with God, and I moved forward. I even wrote them down on flashcards and kept those in those massive chest pockets that are in the green puffy jackets that just collect random things um, by the end of the winter, and I always had them to read with me if I needed a reminder. Um, I was just, after that, I just took each year MSU as it came, and by the time I was a junior, like a real junior, so a redshirt sophomore, um, a few other big things had happened in my life, and these events from freshman year just felt really far off and disconnected from my current life, which they were. Um, but one day in the middle of last winter, I found out from a teammate that some of the boys on my team used like that image that was created for me from those events my freshman year that didn't represent who I actually am and told this to other people as the reason why they should stay away from me. Um, they said I was crazy and used those moments of my greatest shame and deepest pain against me as the reason why. Um, and immediately when I heard that, it was like I was transported back in time. Um, I felt like I was a freshman again and all of those old feelings came flooding back. Except this time I wasn't just sitting at the bottom of a dark pit, I was sitting there while other people looked over me and laughed. And um, once again, I felt like worthless and ashamed of who I was because I knew that people didn't only see me for those mistakes, but they thought it was enough proof of who I was that they should tell to other people to warn them away from me. And I felt like David in Psalm 22, if anyone has ever read that, um, once again, I had to pull myself back up, but this time I had the armor of God with me, so it was so much easier. I knew that I was made worthy in Christ, and nobody could hold my past against me. Not what I'd done, not what had been done to me. It didn't even matter if I was perfect or I'd messed up every single day since then, because His mercies are new every morning, so all I had to do was put my faith in Him, and He wipes me clean. So I shook off those words, and I didn't let them define me, because I knew my worth came from who I was in Christ, and nothing anyone said could take that away from me. I was worthy of his grace and his promises, not because of anything I could do to prove it, just because I was his daughter. Um, and this message actually had such an impact on my life that I have a tattoo now on my ribs that says worthy because I never want to forget it again. And I also think that it's awesome that my name actually means worthy of love in Latin, which tells me that God for my entire life has always wanted me to know this. Um, I just had to take some time to learn that my worth came from him. So I just want to encourage any of you, if you're facing any type of circumstance where you're feeling like shame or guilt or regret or maybe just a season of life that feels pretty dark and it doesn't seem like there's a way out, just go to God, run to him with your burdens. You're not going to be too much for him and he won't turn you away or hold things against you. You just got to place your faith in him and he will, he'll take those burdens away and let you start new and remind you that you are beloved and nothing can ever take that away from you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amanda, thank you so much for, for sharing that. And I just know that it takes so much vulnerability to share your story like you did. And just, and just, we just thank you for that. And it's just so good to know that we can put our, find our worth in the Lord who is eternal. And so often we, we find ourselves putting, putting our worth and, and trust in things that may seem good in, in the moment, but don't last. And so, and so, yeah. Amen. Thank you. Uh, next up, we get to hear from, uh, actually, first of all, if you guys, I think some of you guys don't have your sport next to your name. I almost forgot to remind you guys, just add your sport if you guys don't have that already. That would be fantastic. Um, before we get started, I'll give you guys a couple seconds to do that before we introduce the football coach. Um, so, yeah, next up, we get to hear from football coach, MSU football coach, Coach Barnett, who in fact met his wife at Michigan State um, their freshman year. So um, they have been doing great. And, and they've also lived on the fourth, fourth floor in Case Hall. So, and both kids are at Michigan State. So a true Spartan in our presence today. Coach Barnett, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Parker. Thank you, everybody, for having me. Thanks, Phil, for asking. Uh, Amanda, that was awesome. That was awesome. They take a lot to stand up and say that. And I heard you throwing that word out there. The word is powerful. I love it. And you keep doing your thing. 
Uh, you're beautiful and you're wonderfully made. And don't let nobody tell you anything but that. Um, I'm very passionate about uh, my walk with Christ. He is awesome. He off the chain, as I say. He is off the chain. And this is a slap to the devil's face that all y'all on here right now. He don't like this, just so y'all know that. It's a slap to his face right now. I like it. It's a slap to his face. And uh, But now, not only are we on here, we got to act it out, though. We can't just be on here and saying, you know, act like we're Christians and, and not doing it. All right? All right? Faith without works is dead. So we got to work it, too. We got to work it. Um, I'm not going to, I could go all over the place on this, but I'm going to stick to the script. I got 15 minutes, and I'm going to stick to the script. But understand this, and this is not part of my the scriptures originally. Um, Ephesians 6 says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Know that we're not it's not a flesh and blood thing. So when you see other people trying to do stuff to you and all that kind of stuff, that is the enemy, the devil. There is a devil. And he don't like, he don't like us, any of us. Black, white, Asian, it don't matter. He don't like any of us. All he's here to do is kill, steal, and destroy. John 10 to 10. Check it out. That's what he's here to do. All of us. He don't like it. So he just doing these same tricks that he's been using from the beginning. You know, division, racism. That's a trick of the enemy. That's a trick of the enemy. All right? But we don't know. We ain't fighting it all. Get, get that up off of me. That I, get that up off of me. That's all it is. And so we got to see it as Christians and love one another. All right? And that's what I want to talk about, uh, the love. Love is what I want to talk about, love and unity. Because he's about hate and division. If we have love and unity, imagine what this world would look like and like the, like the Lord wants us to live. So 1 first, first John uh, 4 and 8. 1 John 4 and 8. And I'm a King James guy. Don't laugh at me, okay? Thou loveth and all that stuff. But I am, a, but it's still the word is the word, okay? The word is the word. So if you look at uh, 1 John 4 and 8, it says, he that loveth not, uh, first excuse me, he that loveth not, Love is not, no, it's not God, for God is love. Or whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. So we are here representing God. If you don't know God, if you don't, you don't know love, if you don't know God, because God is love, first of all. So it's all about love. It's all about love, First John 4 and 8. And then 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Keep that in mind. Fear, false evidence appearing real. Fear, that's how the, that's how the enemy operates. False evidence appearing real. All right? He gave us power, love, and a sound mind. And that's how we have to operate. A spirit of power, a spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. And when you're like that, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. So always keep those things in mind. And then the last one I had here was um, Matthew, okay? 22, 33, 37 through 39. All right? 37 through 39. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. All about love. If we do those things, imagine what the world would look like. It's all about love. Not about, and I keep saying this because we're because of where we are, it's not about black or white, all that stuff. It's about love. It's about love. But right now in our country, sadly to say, a lot of division is going on. And the devil's sitting back laughing. He's laughing. He's cracking up. He's having a good time. I just sprinkle a little racism, racism in there. Bam. Got him. Got him. I, that, that's one of my old tricks. I, I, that ain't going nowhere. People fall for it all the time. They fall for it all the time. They throw, I throw a little lust out there. I'll break up a marriage right there. Just throw it boom. Just throw a little lust out there. They're going to fall for it every time. All the way back to the beginning with Adam and Eve. Just think about that now. 
Think about that. His tricks aren't changing. They're not new. They're not new. But if we study the word, truly get into the word and try to live the word in love, we could change the world. Literally, we could change the world. We could. But everybody got to believe that. Understand when people are, are, are attacking you, and I had to grow to this. I'm 53 years old now, okay? Keep that in mind. So, and I'm still growing every day. Still growing every day. Um, but, but people will come at you, and you got you to gotta realize, hey, now that's just the devil trying to come get me and start laughing at them. It ain't them. Don't get ever get mad at people. Believe it or not. Don't get mad at people. Just look and say, look at the enemy. Go to work. He's working through that person. We are all spirit, soul, and, and, and body. Okay? And the God, God commands us in the Bible to operate in the spirit so we don't fulfill the lust of our flesh. Because our flesh is warned against our spirit daily. Right now, our flesh and spirit are warned. They're going against each other. All right? The flesh, the flesh don't like the spiritual thing, and the spiritual things don't like the fleshly things. So we got to stay in our word and strengthen ourselves all the time. Stay in your Bible, study the word, get into a Bible-based church where they're preaching the word, okay? Truly preaching the word, and then know the word for yourself. Get into it, understand it, and know it for yourself, not just because somebody's telling you, but you're looking and reading it yourself. It speaks plainly to you. It's not, it's not hard to understand. It really isn't, all right? And some of the stuff you're looking about, you're like, wow, I didn't know that was in there. He can speak to anything that you're dealing with right now if you just study that word and have it down in your heart and you speak it, you believe it, and you act upon it. So that's what I want to share with you guys tonight. Love, unity, and, uh, and, and look at those scriptures. Um, I think, Phil, I left some questions for you all when you go into your different groups to talk about those different scriptures and what the world would look like if people operated like that. And so then you got to look at yourself too. So if we want to change the world, we got to start with us. How am I operating every day? So every day when I walk, because it's a mindset, everything starts in the mind, okay? I'm having a bad day. That's your mind. That's, come on. I'm having a great day every day. I wake up. You didn't woke up. And some people didn't wake up the next day. You wake up. Good morning to everybody. I'm happy every day. Good morning, good morning. I'm letting everybody know. They feeling my energy. They should feel your energy. All right? Is everything going to be perfect always? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But you have a God who's, who's created you, okay, and loves you. Beyond any and all things that you've done, you're still here. You're still here. There's nobody perfect. You're not perfect. And what you'll find, people will try to attack Christians, but I think it's funny. It's funny. They can always tell you how you should act. And I'm like, well, why don't you act right? Why are they always trying to come at us? You're a hypocrite. You this, you that, da, 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 da. Understand that you're not perfect. All right? That's the first thing you tell them. I understand I'm not perfect. But I also understand that I got a God that loves me no matter what I do. He loves me. I can't even earn his love. It's all about him. I can't go out and earn his love. All right? I just got to live it out. Live out the word. And just keep laughing. Now, don't get mad at them. Tell them I love you anyway. And there's nothing you can do about it. I'll let get them, man. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I get excited. I'm fired up that you guys are on here. Keep representing God and everything that y'all do. Uh, he's awesome. He's real. And he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Just keep riding him out. Keep riding. He got some great things for all you. And I'm, I'm, he got me going, I'm going to say this. I'm, I was almost done. All right. But never be jealous about anybody else. Because what he got for you is for you. And it's awesome. What God has for you is for you. So celebrate other people when they do well. Celebrate when they get a promotion. And don't, even if it's somebody that's out in the world. So what God has for you is for you. You don't have to be jealous of anybody else. What he has for you is for you. And it is awesome. It is awesome. He made you. There's no other you. There is no other you. So be you for God. Give him all the glory, honor, and praise. And watch your life be abundant in everything that you do. God bless all you guys. Thank you. Mm. Coach, thank you. That was awesome. Amen to that.
it's just so good. Thank you for being here. Just so good to have you on again. Uh, and just to know how much God loves us. God is good. And uh, thank you for taking us through First John 4, 8. And thank you for reminding us that it's all about love. Because God is love and everything that he's done for us is love. Um, perfect. So, again, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Coach Barnett. Um, before we get into discussion groups, um, discussion groups should take about 15 minutes, and then we'll get you guys out of here. Um, no need to stay on after discussion groups once you're broken out into groups. No need to come back into this group. You guys are good to head out after that. But um, before we head in there, um, if you guys want to bow your heads, and I'll, I'll pray us out, um, pray for Amanda and pray for, pray for Coach. Lord, thank you for just this opportunity to meet tonight and just honor you and just remember that you are love, God. Thank you for Amanda. God, just thank you for everything that she had to share. Um, we just um, just commend her and just we just thank you for, for her, her life of faith and just the ability to trust you in everything that she does and just um, start each, new, each day new, um, knowing that, that your grace is enough, God. Thank you for Coach Burnett, Lord. We just we just ask you to um, continue to help him lead in a in a good way, in a faithful way, God, on the football team. And just we just ask uh, and thank you that that he's able to to lead a life of faith. And uh, just thank you for this group of people tonight, Lord. We just ask for a good discussion and good, in discussion group, and we just ask that that you continue to bless our lives each and every day. In your sense, let me pray. Amen.